Hello. It's just a nice Sunday morning, yeah. And let's go further. And let's speak. Uh, let's speak about some things, yeah. So I I uploaded the video yesterday with the uh, Omlo and all the things, yeah. Now I try to keep it short, and it was short. It was like twenty minutes speaking. To have an idea about the theory, you know. You actually can make like you can go to the university and you can learn like five years only theory. So the theory is a very wide area. It's a lot to learn. So I cut it short, like twenty minutes. Also, I read the comments. I read the comments and uh, yeah, this is basic. I know it's basic, but that's the way how you work with electronics yeah when i'm fixing things i'm using this that's how you fix things just applying in most of the cases yet yeah, the ohm law but you don't apply on paper you already know from your experience yeah you know exactly what's going on there and actually fixing something it's just a probability game, yeah? Actually, it's a probability loader, yeah? You can have a look on Google and you can learn it if you want. But fixing, it's a probability game. Just keep in mind. So actually, you check some things, you check some voltages, you check some resistors, you check some currents, and you, and you, can, uh, you can expect a conclusion. Yeah, based on on a probability. Yeah, based on probability. Yeah, so probably if I don't have voltage here, or it's taking too much current, or you know something like that, probably does the fault. Yeah, so it's a probability thing. Okay, for that one, this video I I was meant to do this video about resistors, start with the components, but I just want. To prove my theory and let's replicate a fault yeah so for that that thing yeah I will go on one of my video I made a video about the iPhone because even this is applying on whatever I'm doing day by day yeah so let's go on the desktop okay and let's have a look on this uh, on this video yeah and after that we can uh, we can replicate the fault okay the first thing what I will do if it's a short most likely to be on the on the battery power rail on the main VCC yeah because uh, because Usually that happen on on, on uh, iPhones. You know, iPhone six they have a caps here. Maybe it's that cap. We don't know yet. Yeah. So let's check for short. I don't have the multimeter there, but we have the beeping thing. So we can check with the beeping, but I'm sure will not be short here. The, sh the short is not here. Yeah. I'm sure about that. No, the short is not here. Next. Okay. Yeah. So some things, yeah? On that iPhone, let's draw the iPhone, yeah? Let's draw the iPhone. Let's say, yeah? This is my iPhone. It's the board. As the iPhone board. Yeah? And I have the battery connector. Uh, how can I do that? Let's, let's draw the battery here. Where should I draw the battery? It's like the iPhone, the iPhone connector, yeah? We have plus and minus. Plus and minus, and here we have the battery, yeah? What I did, I took out the battery, and I check on the connector. And what I said, I said, you know what? If the short is here, if the sh if if we have a short, it's not here, 
and I check for short and actually here was no short was high resistance yeah okay so that's what I did I check here also I said if it's a short should be on the battery side because obviously the battery is supplying the energy now let's go and listen further one second next thing come with the power supply yeah power supply we have four four point nine volts is fine ground you can get the ground from anywhere that's ground yeah yeah it is ground and that's plus and we have a current uh, we have a short there yeah we can see 2.2 amps yeah you can see the board is shorted look 2 amps so it's taking 2 ok so let's have a look on the screen what do we have on the screen the power supply is limiting the voltage 2.8 volts and the amps the current is 2.16 amps yeah so how this is possible to be a short with the power supply but is something which I can't check with the with the multimeter I will explain you why and how how is possible because I knew there should be a semiconductor semiconductor meaning transistor or diode yeah on the iPhone case I know there is a MOSFET so let's uh, <coughs> Let's draw a MOSFET here, or a di no, listen to me, when, when we are speaking about, about transistor or MOSFET, just think, MOSFET, transistor, diode are the same, just think on your head, is something like that, so we have the, can be a transistor, yeah, like a, a normal uh, bipolar uh, transistor or, or uh, MOSFET. But think is like that, yeah? Just think is like that. Okay? Just ignore the ignore the base. Just think is like that. So that's the way how they work. Okay? That's the way how they work. The current is flowing on one direction. Okay? And we have the base or the gate, which is acting, let's say, like a switch here. Let's say we have a switch. I know this is this, it's it's a lot more uh, complicated, but that's that's how they work. So that's how they work. So what I knew. Let's get a diode. Yeah, so we have a diode here. It's just a random diode. If I'm trying, let's try, yeah, applying the voltage on the battery. We have the multimeter on the corner. So this is a short. So I'm trying to short the power supply. Minus plus the power supply is working. You can see the voltage drop. So actually the the protection on the power supply it's acting. So we have the diode, we connect the diode and nothing happened. We are not yet speaking about the diode, but just for uh, to prove this fault. And actually it's 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 a it's all about ohm law. It's not about the diode, but I just try to give you an example. So here, yeah, is is nothing flowing. If I spin the diode, it's a short. We can see there. So actually the voltage get dropped like 1.1 amp and the diode is drawing like 2.5 uh, amps, you can see. Good. Let's replicate the thing, yeah? That's my iPhone. This is my iPhone. Just think this is the iPhone inside, the iPhone board. And uh, I will have here the MOSFET, which is the diode. This plus, yeah, from plus, let's draw a diode. <clears throat> and from here I have VCC main VCC main 
And obviously the minus, the minus is ground. The minus is everywhere. So that's how the iPhone is, yeah? Actually, instead of diode, it's a MOSFET, which is acting like a diode, like a switch, a diode with a switch, yeah? So this is my iPhone. This is my diode, yeah? And let's go connect the diode on some way. Of the bulb will work, yeah. And you have plus and minus. You have minus. Minus is ground. Minus is everywhere. And you have plus. That's a circuit, yeah. So we have ground. This is ground. We have plus. Yeah, that's a circuit. Okay. What happened on any short? This is my iPhone, and my iPhone is working. Yeah? On any short, let's short, let's short with something. <coughs> okay, let's use a wire to short the thing. So if I'm shorting the light bulb, yeah? Here and here. Now it's a short. And you can see on the on the on the power meter on the corner, yeah, the voltage dropped to 1.2 volts and 2.5 amps. Okay. Uh, let's connect the short. Let's make the short to be permanent. Yeah. Uh, one second, we need something more. No, we don't need something more. Let's short it, yeah? Let me lower the voltage. One second. Obviously, the diet gets hot. It's drawing 1.7 amps. Like on this moment, 700 milliamps. So now we have a short. Okay? Now we have a short. Actually, going back on the video, we have 2.8 volts. Yeah? No, the the, 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 bulb, the light bulb is still on. Actually, now it's a short. We have zero, 0 0.9 volts and 1.7 amps. Okay? Now, let's check something together. Let's take the plus out. Let's take the minus out. We still have a short there. Yeah, we still have a short. So my iPhone is shorted, yeah. Like how I said on the video. After the after um, after a semiconductor, yeah. And I will check with the multimeter, yeah. If I will check with the multimeter, uh, let's check for short, short beeping. You can see the multimeter here. So checking for short here. Actually, it's not short because of this diode. Again, short. It's not short. It's showing me like 400 ohms, which is not short. But actually, the short is here. So here, yeah, indeed, we have zero ohms. But this is the battery connector, and it's not short. And if I come with the power supply, like on the video, 4.2 volts. If I come with plus and minus, it is short. Yeah? So the voltage get dropped like 1.2 volts and 1.9 amps. But with a multimeter, you can't check the short. So with a multimeter, is no short. Here is no short. 
that's a situation when you can you, you cannot actually check the short with a multimeter yeah so I know it looks primitive to use like a power supply but that's the only way how you can find a short okay so that's replicating the fault from that video yeah that's the ohm law ohm law going back on the video yeah 2.8 volts 2.1 amps yeah let's try it I R yeah so what do we know we know on our triangle the voltage when I'm checking the thing is 2.8 2.8 the current 2.1 2.1 and the uh, resistance yeah because that's what I'm trying to do with the power supply and the multimeter checking the internal resistance of the iPhone let me grab the calculator one second and we have like that yeah 2.8.8 divide by 2.1 equals 1.3 yeah so the resistance of the iPhone it's 1.3 ohms 1.3 okay obviously with 1.3 ohms is no way how the iPhone can be okay it's no way with let's 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 calculate something else so because the voltage is dropped on the power supply let's try to have an image about what happened if you have uh, uh, when you have the bat battery yeah in but the battery is protected and on this case cut down the power well let's say the battery doesn't have the protection yeah let's say the battery is 4.2 4.2 volts and we have we don't know the current we don't know the current that's the thing we don't know the current but we know the the resistance the resistance is 1.3 ohms let's see what current will have on the normal uh, working condition not working with a battery without protection let's see so we have 4.2 4.2 yeah divide by 1.3 equals 3.2 amps yeah so that's the current 3.2 amps 3.2 amps it's a lot yeah I'm trying when we find find a search when I'm searching for a fault to don't use high amperage like on the video on the video we can see the limit yeah 2.16 amps because if you have something if you have if you have a, a semiconductor and you use high amps because obviously the short is here the short is from here here to the ground and actually the short was on a capacitor yeah so that was my short so if I'm using high amperage here I can burn this component this one the semiconductor the MOSFET the diode I can burn it so that's the reason why I'm using like max like 2 amps 1 2 amps something like that sometimes 2.5 just to don't burn this component on that case from the video actually the short was not on the battery connector but when I was coming with the power supply the battery is, you know, has a protection. Short, it will cut down the voltage. Okay? And these schematics, what you can see here, yeah? These schematics, it's on many devices. Many, like, probably any laptop 
and any phone. Even on the laptops, you have on the 19 volts, you have the charging port, yeah? And you have ground, ground is everywhere, yeah? And you have plus, and you have plus 19, 19 volts. Remember, we spoke, we have two MOSFETs. We all drawn them like a diode or, a, a, or like a switch. You remember? Same thing. And you can check this short, if you have a short, yeah? From the input. That's a very quick diagnostic, yeah? Diagnose, diag the way how diagnose the things quickly. Okay? But here is not a, like a game with diodes and MOSFETs and this is just a resistance thing. Because obviously a resistor, a diode, like here. Let's get the short out. So what this diode is doing on this circuit? What is doing? Nothing. It's just a resistor. Yeah? It's doing nothing more. Exactly like... Um, like on the iPhone, you see, exactly like in the most the MOSFETs from uh, from the laptop, is doing nothing. Actually, the final is the bulb get light up, and the diode is just a resistor. Yeah, that's a side effect. That's how it's called side effect. So actually, the transistor, the semiconductors. Uh, the, uh, sorry, the transistor and the diode. It's not meant to have an internal resistance, yeah? But that's how they work. And actually, they have an internal resistance. On the MOSFET, internal resistance is very low. Thus, the MOSFETs are the future transistors, yeah? They are the future because of the internal low resistance. Okay, it's clear? So let's speak about the about the resistors. If we start this video, hopefully everything is clear. Let's grab some resistors. Yeah, I have my box with candies. So those are resistors. That's how a resistor looks like a normal one, what you will find on uh, different, probably most old things, because the new things they are uh, on the new. Everything what is new is made with SMD, like this one. We have a TV board, and you can see the resistors. Yeah, big one. Yeah, because probably. On this, um, how it's used this resistor needs need more watts, more power. But the small ones, you see, all these things are resistor, are so small, you can't even see them. Okay? So you can't really learn on the SMD uh, resistors. Well, we can do some things with the big ones, with the normal ones, the old ones. These are these are carbon film resistors. So also, so actually it's a ceramic body and it's a carbon film, yeah? How the resistor works? They resist against the electric current, yeah? We spoke yesterday about this. Another example, a better example, was this. This is a pen. Yeah, that's how my wife see this, like a pen. What I'm seeing, I'm seeing like a resistor, yeah? So actually graphite is a good resistor. So let's get this out. Yeah? You know, this is a pen, you know, this is a... Okay, graphite. And let's check with the multimeter to see the resistance.
this one 3.4 ohms quite a low resistance yeah resistor another story what do you see just a pen it's a resistor you see the graphite is inside same thing we can check the resistance here to here and we have 11 ohms okay now let's try to apply this resistor on our circuit our circuit the bulb let's get the diode out And we have the resistor. That's my resistor. Okay. Let's connect with the power supply. Twelve volts. Now let's see. Actually, the resistor is working. Yeah, it's getting hot. But the idea of this, you can see, it's working. So it's it's conducting the the electric current and has some resistance. On our case, like three ohms. How how much? This one. Yeah. 3.1 ohms so the, the graphite can be a good resistor same with the other thing but how I don't know how we can check this are 10 ohms 10 ohms but because the the light bulb is taking a lot of power we can see the sparks So check on the light bulb, yeah? The light bulb, yeah? So you can see just a little bit of light, not too much. If I try Let's try, but I can't take this graphite uh, core out. Hmm. Let's use the other one. If we can. And let's create a adjustable resistor. Because you can also find adjustable resistors. Yeah. So just moving this, yeah, we can adjust. You can see the uh, it's, it's too bright. Let me choose something else. I think I have here. One second. It's too bright, and you can you can't see the difference. Probably you can see on this one.
this was it's another uh, light bulb but less uh, less watts you can see the light changing the light intensity from high to low hopefully you can see the the thing if not we can check with the with the with the ohmmeter so how much we have here we have 1.8 1 1.1 1 1 1.7 something like that and when we move this the resistance is increasing yeah and on the end we have like 3 ohms so that's the explanation of the resistor it's resisting against the current now one thing about the resistors like these ones they have a color code I will not speak now about the color code you can find the color code on Google and you have to you have to learn it it's very important like on this case we have red red and brown that's mean two two and one zero 220 ohms let's get different ones so we have brown black brown one zero and one zero a hundred ohms yeah like different one I don't know what color is that. Blue, probably. 7, 2 kilo ohms. Let me check. 7, 2. Yeah, 80. Okay, that's weird because the, the second ring is it's, it's red. So it should be something with 2. So it's 82. Yeah, 82. Okay. 82 kilo ohms. And we have... We have orange, orange, yellow. Three, three, and yellow is four. So you have four zeros. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's 330 kilo ohms. 330 yeah let's see yeah something like 325 so you have to learn this thing we have red black black so we have 20 ohms 20 ohms yeah now the resistor connecting um, you can connect the resistors on serial mode or on the parallel mode so we have here 20 ohms resistor we have two resistor 20 ohms if we connect them on serial serial yeah on a serial mode So now we should have 40 ohms. And we have 40 ohms. Yeah? Now on a parallel mode, <coughs> let's say, <coughs> let's say on the resistors, serial, yeah? On a serial mode is r1 plus r2 plus you know that's the the total resistance on the parallel mode parallel mode is one per total resistance equals one per uh, r1 plus one per r2 and so on on the on the parallel mode <coughs> the resistance the resistance um, 
you can use this formula to calculate but many times you don't have time for the firm formula just keep in mind if you connect two resistors in parallel <coughs> the resistance will be half yeah in the case you have two same resistors like on this case we should have 10 ohms and we do have 10 ohms yeah what happened now we have half of the resistance but double power so if normally let's say this is a 250 milliwatts uh, resistor now we have 500 milliwatts that's very important that's how you build like high power resistors if you don't have one you just connect the resistors on a parallel mode but the resistance always goes down according with that formula if I connect one more one more is so now we have three resistors so the resistance should be now around 7 ohms yeah 7 ohms okay so that's the way how, how this resistor works let's try let's say let's try and power up the bulb for one this resistor yeah Okay, we have plus. Twenty ohms resistor. The bulb is lighting up. Well look at the resistor, you can see the smoke. You can't see the smoke. Well actually the resistor is getting burned because obviously it cannot supply the energy yeah so my resistor is gone why because I connect a power high po like this one uh, how many watts one second five watts five watts with 200 milliwatts resistor so that does the problem you can't do something like that. You can apply the ohm law and find what resistor do you need. Like let's say we have 15 volts and we have we want to power up the bulb, a 12 volts bulb. We can apply the ohm law. But or you can use like um, resistance on uh, parallel. Parallel power goes up resistance goes down okay that's the rule like here it's on and the resistors are fine are alive yeah obviously here are not 5 watts resistor are still getting warm but are not getting burned okay what do we have more we have adjustable resistors like these ones obviously we cannot use the graphite and move the wire these are simple to use and you can adjust them with the screwdriver yeah let's try so this we can see it's it's, it's writing on on the this adjustable resistor 105 that's mean 10 and 50 that's mean 1 mega ohm 1 mega ohm let's check to see if it's 1 mega ohm yeah nearly like 0 by 800 kilohms and just adjusting 
we can have a lot of values yeah like we can see 270 going down zero what I'm doing wrong okay I'm touching the okay yeah starting from zero 1.4 and we can go up 85 kilo ohms 100 kilo ohms 200 kilo ohms and so on okay what's wrong with this one my body resistance so 600 kilo ohms yeah that's wrong <laughs> So I just connect like two resistors on a parallel mode and obviously the value is lower. The resistance is lower, yeah? Like on my case, even the body has a resistance. So my body has like from one hand to the other hand around 600 kilo ohms. Okay? So obviously when I check this, let's check. We have 800 kilo ohms, yeah? If I connect on the parallel mode a resistor, which is my, my hand, now we have 500 kilo ohms, okay? So now how does the resistor are working and the adjustable resistor are working? Now, probably... I'll stop now and we'll speak next time about uh, the other components. But before I finish, I just want to tell you everything what you do on the electronics, you do based on the ohm law. Because what do we have there? We have resistance and we have voltage and we have amps and that's how the things work, yeah? Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one, yeah? Bye.